Grace and peace, everyone. Today is Sunday, August 21st, 2022. Welcome to the Christ Fellowship Baptist Church Sunday School Meeting, where our pastor is the Reverend Dr. David L. Kelly II. My name is Dolores Gerald, and I am your facilitator for this meeting. We meet every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. If you would like more information about our church, please visit our website at www.ChristFellowshipBaptistChurch.org. Our lesson today is titled, The River of Life. It is taken from Revelations chapter 22, verses 1 through 7. So get your Bibles out and let us pray. Father God, in the mighty matchless name of Jesus, Yeshua, we give you glory, honor, praise. We give you all that we are and who we are. We glorify and magnify you today. Father God. We ask, coming before you, that you forgive us of anything we've said, done, thought, that was not pleasing in your sight. Restore us, Father, into righteousness. Cleanse us again with the blood of the Lamb. Father, we ask that you forgive us. I ask right now, Father God, that you bless each and every person that thought it not robbery to get up this morning and come and seek your face. I ask right now, Father, that you bless them. Bless their households. Bless their households of faith, Father God. Bless the pastors over those households of faith, Father God. I ask right now... Father, that you uh, put a special blessing on my pastor, the Reverend Dr. David L. Kelly II. I ask a blessing on all pastors that you cover them from the tip of their head to the soles of their feet. Gird them up on every week and lean inside. Put a hedge of protection around them as they go about doing the work that you call them to do in the vineyard, Father God. I ask right now. In the name of Jesus, that you prepare every heart, every mind, every eye, every ear, every spirit to receive whatever it is Holy Spirit has for us today. I ask that you hide me behind the cross that I might not be seen. Holy Spirit, you stand up, you do the teaching. I am more than willing to be your mouthpiece. I have done the preparation, but I am not always able. I ask right now that you use me. Give me clarity of eyes to see, clarity of ears to hear, clarity of speech to speak, whatever it is you give me. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus, we put all of these petitions and these prayers up. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Minister Felder, whenever you are ready, read. Okay, I'll be reading from the King James Version of Revelations 22, verses 1 through 7. The new heaven. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, and the midst of the streets of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bears 12 matters of fruits and yield her fruit every month. And the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nation. And there shall be no more curse, but the thorn of God and of the lamb. And lamb shall be it, and his servant shall serve him for, and there shall see his face, and his name shall be in on their forehead. Five, and there shall be no night there, and there need no candle, neither shall light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Six. And he shall, excuse me, and he said unto me, these sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophet seated his angels to show unto his servants the thing which must shortly be done. Seven, behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the Lord prophecy of this book, bless. He said, behold, I quickly bless is he that cometh and saying of the prophecy of this book. This I read Revelations, the 22nd chapter, verses one through seven. May the Lord add a minute blessings to the hearers and the readers of his holy and righteous word. Amen, amen, amen. Grace and peace. Thank you so much. Minister Felda for the reading of the word. So we're back in Revelation again. 
Our study continues in the book of Revelation. We are now in Revelation chapter 22. And Revelation is one of the most misunderstood books in the Bible. One of the mis most misunderstood. I'm telling you, the scholars out there have so many interpretations about what's going on in Revelation. It would make your head spin. So my suggestion to anybody, anybody who's going to read the book of Revelation, who's going to study the book of Revelation, is to pray and ask Holy Spirit for Revelation to understand. Okay? In the study that we've done so far, we've learned about a new home prepared for us by our King and Savior, Jesus Yeshua, in the Holy City in New Jerusalem. That it is the tabernacle of Yahweh where he will dwell with men, and they shall be his people. And that Yahweh himself will be them, be with them and be their God. How the Father pronounced, Behold, I make all things new. And that all of this was to take place in a new heaven and a new earth that had no seed. And the things that were made new were the new heaven, the new earth, the holy city, which is New Jerusalem, and the kingdom citizens, the children of God, who have now received their new bodies so that they can dwell on the new earth in the holy city, in the place prepared by Jesus, Yeshua, for us to commune with the Father face to face we also learned about a new city the bride of the lamb which is the holy city new jerusalem which descends from heaven to earth and we learned that this city was a humongous and well fortified city with walls made of pure gold inlaid with jasper like ruby with 12 gates made of pearl with 12 angels as the gatekeepers with 12 foundations with all manner of beautiful stones inlaid at them streets of pure gold so shiny it looked like transparent glass and that the city emanated with the glory of Yahweh and the colors of his glory that Yahweh the father and the lamb Yeshua Jesus were its temple and because of the finished work of Jesus at the cross we could enter into the presence of Yahweh face to face in the holy city in New Jer the New Jerusalem Revelation 21 verse 23 says the city had no need of the sun or of the moon of the sh to shine in it for the glory of God illuminated and the lamb is its light amen that the gates shall not be shut at all because there was no night there and only those written in the Lamb's book of life will dwell come and go into this holy city glory be to God our lesson today takes us inside the holy city the bride of Christ the new Jerusalem the tabernacle of Yahweh our new home the place prepared for us by Jesus Yeshua so here we go Revelation 22 verses 1 and 2 and I'm reading the New King James Version and it reads and he showed me a pure river of water of life clear as crystal proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb in the middle of his street and on either side of the river was the tree of life which bore twelve fruits each tree yielding its fruit every month the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations amen John has shown a river of pure crystal clear running water and it is called the river of the water of life this river had its source at the throne of Yahweh and the lamb and Revelation 21 verse 6 is Yahweh says it is done I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts amen and Jeremiah 2 verse 13 Yahweh says for my people have committed two evils they have forsaken me the fountain of living waters and hewn themselves cisterns broken cisterns that can hold no water amen Yahweh is the fountain of living waters this river puts me into mind of other rivers in scripture in Genesis chapter 2 verse 10 it reads now a river went out of Eden to water the garden and from there it parted and became four river heads amen then Yahweh created a river in the garden then the first paradise to water the garden and water is a symbol of life and Yahweh the fountain of living waters is the source of life glory be to God in Ezekiel chapter 47 Ezekiel is shown a vision of water flowing from the sanctuary of the temple and as the water flows it becomes a river and it heals everything it touches the river started from the temple where the Holy of Holies was where Yahweh manifested his presence to the people of Israel it was a vision to Ezekiel that Yahweh is the source of all life the fountain of waters that gives life Yahweh says in Deuteronomy 32 verse 39 
Now see that I, even I am he, and there is no God besides me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Amen. Jesus, Yeshua says to the woman at the well in John chapter 4, verses 10 and 13, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. And then in John chapter 7 verses 37 and 38, he says, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Amen. He was speaking about Holy Spirit. However, even Holy Spirit is like water, for he is poured out on man. In Isaiah 44, verse 3, Yahweh says, I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessings on your offspring. Amen. And in Joel 2, verse 28, he says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Amen. In Acts 10, verse 45, it reads, The gift of Holy Spirit has been poured out on the Gentiles also. Amen. So Yeshua, Jesus, our King and Shepherd, brings us to Yahweh, the fountain of living waters, who will give freely to all who thirst of his living waters. These living waters are depicted here in Revelation 22 as a river flowing from the throne of Yahweh and the Lamb of God, Jesus. Yeshua. Yahweh, the fountain of living waters, is the source of life in the river of the water of life. Glory be to God. Then, John writes that in the middle of the street and on either side of the river was the tree of life. Amen. Inside the holy city, the New Jerusalem, which is the bride of Christ, in the middle of his street, on either side of the river of the water of life is the tree of life. The tree of life is mentioned in Genesis chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, which reads, The Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Amen. When Adam sinned by eating the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, access to the tree of life was blocked from man. For in Genesis 3, verses 22 and 23, in the NIV, it reads, And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Amen. Since that time until now, access to paradise and the tree of life has been denied to man. Because our loving Father does not want us to be in a corrupted state forever. However, the second Adam, Jesus, Yeshua, by his victory over death, hell, and the grave, has given those who endured to the end, those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, those who he has prepared a place for in the Father's house, the right to have access to the tree of life forever. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 7, he says, to the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life which is in the paradise of God. Amen. Here is the tree of life in the paradise of Yahweh, which is the tabernacle of Yahweh, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, the bride of Christ. In this paradise, which is a garden inside of a city, the tree of life is on either side of the river that flows through the midst of the garden. And now that was a bit confusing to me. I'm just going to be honest. I, I mean, how does one tree be on opposite sides of the bank of a river. How, 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 how does that happen? I, 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 I just couldn't picture it in my mind and I even went to look up to see if such a thing even existed. But what I came across was a large, the large redwood trees, the ones in California where they mm -hmm. actually, actually um, build roads right in the center of the tree. That's what I was thinking, Lois. The it, river runs through it. Through it, yeah. It, it telling you, it was just after I was like, okay, um, I, 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 I didn't get it. But, but then, then I was corrected by Holy Spirit again. <laughs> Who is John writing about? Who's he writing about? He's writing about Yahweh, the most high God. The one who says in Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9, 
for my my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Amen. And then in Jeremiah 32, verse 27, he says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And then he says in Genesis 18, verse 14, Is anything too hard for the Lord? Amen. So, with being corrected in my concept concerning the Father, again, my imagination was set free to speculate on the size of the tree that could span a river, most likely creating some kind of tunnel, right? And, and having foliage all over it so that the fruits are all over it and hanging close enough to the ground that whosoever will could come and take fruit off of it and eat. I mean, really, I mean, in my mind, what, what I see is something that's a cross between a redwood and a magnolia tree because redwoods grow really big and wide and magnolia trees grow close to the ground and, and you can walk in and pick off the, the, the fruit from the magnolia tree. It was just absolutely phenomenal the way I just saw that in my mind and our God is just so awesome. All right. So, so, so in my mind, I saw this tree and it was like um, a twisted trunks like vines twisted together running along the bank of the river and flowing from one side to the other coming down on both sides i mean it's just awesome the things that my father is able to do i mean just to picture that is just awesome okay now this tree of life is not only on both sides of the river in the middle of the street in the middle of this garden which is in the holy city it grows 12 different kinds of fruit and it puts forth its harvest every month, all right? Now, I don't know if it's growing a different fruit every month and harvesting or if it's growing all 12 fruits at the same time and harvesting. It doesn't matter. It speaks of the provision of Yahweh, which Philippians 4 verse 19 says, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. So the fruit would be harvested every month and feed everyone from its produce and there be a variety for everyone glory be to god and then john writes the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations just like the water of the river of life gives life to all who drink the leaves of the tree fed by the river of life are healing to those who eat them this is mentioned by ezekiel in ezekiel chapter 47 verse 12 which says Along the banks of the river on this side and that will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month because their water flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for medicine. Amen. This reminds me that even now, the most effective remedies for healing and disease are found in nature, the Father's creation. Things like turmeric and ginger and willow bark for pain and inflammation and eucalyptus, oregano and basil for respiratory issues and rosemary and tea tree for antiseptics. Um, the list is endless just and it's just amazing. It's, it's our Father's infinite and the things that he has in nature for us is infinite. Glory be to God. His provision and protection of those that are his own is amazing. And this passage concerning the river and the tree speaks about Yahweh's providential care. Glory be to God. It speaks about his providential care. That is his ability to care for, to provide for, and protect those that belong to him. Glory be to God. One other thing I want to speak on. The number 12. The number 12 is used constantly in these last two chapters, chapter 21 and 22, when describing the holy city, the new Jerusalem, which is the bride of Christ, the bride of Christ and the paradise of Yahweh. We have described to us 12 gates, 12 angels at the gates, the name of the 12 tribes on the gates, 12 foundations to the city. The names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb on the foundations of the city. 12,000 furloughs is its length, its width, and its height. 144 cubits, which is 12 times 12, as the width of the wall. 12 precious stones on the 12 foundation. 12 pearls for the 12 gates. 12 kinds of fruit on the tree of life, given fruit for the 12 months of the year. 
the number 12. It represents God's power and authority. It represents authority and governmental rule, as well as perfect governmental foundation. It can also symbolize completeness. Glory be to God. All right, so here in Revelation, we have the completeness of Yahweh's provision, protection, communion, and governmental rule for his people. Glory be to God. Any comments, any questions on what I've covered so far? Whew. Okay, glory be to God. Revelation chapter, yeah. go ahead. Um, you know what, I, just, I was just thinking about how you were talking about how God blocked off the uh, tree of knowledge. The tree and of I thought, of, yeah. Uh -huh. And I thought about how he says we perish because of lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So because he blocked that off from the beginning, Adam and Eve were perishing from the lack of knowledge. From the beginning. And that, that, yeah. And I just thought about that. You know, I never thought about that before, how he blocked that off. And then he, yet he says, we perish because of the lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to, to throw that in there. <laughs> oh, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It's a good a good um point to make. Glory be to God. It's if like, anybody God. wants to read that, that's Genesis three twenty four. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And also, um, the Lord, sister, the right. Lord, when he talks about the um trees planted by the rivers. Of you muted yourself. You muted yourself, Minister Felder. I'm sorry. Go ahead. By the root together. That's how relationships are supposed to be with one another. And as our relationship climbs with each other, we we, we bring growth. It's unity. Yes. And if, if have, and, and more you have that water to those roots, it's gonna grow. It's gonna it's gonna bear fruit. It's gonna be green. It's gonna it has life. So with with God bringing life in us, we have to bring life in one another. That's what I saw out of the twining of the trees and how the um, trees was, you know, sep the rivers separated the tree. Because wow. remember, if we compare with the um, with the weed and the tear, remember he said he would do the separation. Yeah. So if we, if we compare it, we can see that he done the separate between the trees, but those trees had life. And then you can choose whether you want life or death. Amen. That's Amen. what I got out of it. Amen. Thank you. That's a that's an awesome insight. I have to go look at that again. Thank you so much. Uh, amen. I see. I see that, Miss DC. Amen. Okay. Revelation chapter twenty two, verses three and four, and it reads, "And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and His servants shall serve Him. They shall see His face, and His name shall be on their foreheads." Amen. John now shifts gears and speaks about the conditions he see in the holy city, which is the New Jerusalem, the paradise of Yahweh. He says, there shall be no more curse. Amen. In the Garden of Eden, the land was lush and it was well watered and it only needed tending or maintenance. There was no toil there. In Genesis 2 verse 15, it reads, then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. Amen. However, after Adam's disobedience, he was put out of the garden and told by Yahweh in Genesis 3, verse 17 and 18, Cursed is the ground for your sake, and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat of the herb of the field. Amen. The ground was cursed, and now instead of maintaining the land, Adam had to work the land and work hard at bringing forth the fruit of the land. Paul says in Romans 8, 20 and 21, for the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption and to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Amen. The ground remained cursed and was subject to corruption like man himself was until the new heaven and the new earth were created. Once the new earth was created, there was no more curse in the earth. The land was once again well watered by the river of the water of life. It was lush and constantly producing fruit for all to eat. John then writes, the throne of God and of the lamb shall be in it. Amen. John is stating that where Yahweh is, there is no curse. 
There's no curse. There's nothing that defiles. Yahweh says in Leviticus 11, verse 44, I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore consecrate yourselves and you shall be holy. For I am holy. Amen. Nothing that is defiled or unholy can be where Yahweh is. And a cursed earth is unholy. That's why a new earth was necessary if Yahweh was to tabernacle or dwell with his people. Amen. Then John writes, his servants shall serve him. Amen. Now the word servant used here means a bond servant or one who was purchased. And all those who are kingdom citizens have been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. His blood was the ransom or the purchase price required to set us free from bondage and sin. So all kingdom citizens who are no longer in bondage to sin are in the service of the king. We switch masters, y'all. Our king and masters tell us in Matthew chapter 11, verses 29 and 30, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Our king and shepherd tells us who are his sheep. In Matthew 10 verses 27 and 28. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Amen. Kingdom citizens and sheep of the shepherd are servants, are the servants servants these servants spoken of here in this verse the word serve here is you is used and it means to submit humbly or to worship worship glory be to god all right so all who have been purchased or redeemed by the blood of the lamb will worship the father and the son we will see him face to face. There will be no veil. There will be no hindrance keeping us from seeing his face. There will be no separation between him and us ever again. Yahweh and the Lamb will dwell with us and we will be his people. Yahweh himself will be with us and be our God. And we shall worship him face to face. Well, what comes to mind is Tamla Man's song, I Can Only Imagine. I mean, she talks about the experience of what it would be like to see him face to face. Glory be to God. Then John writes, his name shall be on their foreheads. Amen. We who are kingdom citizens have been sealed by Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 says in part, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. Amen. Revelation 3 verse 12 reads, He who overcomes, I, evil, he who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. Amen. So, those that overcome, those that have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, those that are written in the Lamb's book of life, will have the name of the Father and the Lamb written on their foreheads. Glory be to God. And that speaks to being written in your mind, in your mindset. When we are sealed by the Holy Spirit, we're given the mind of Christ. Glory be to God. So that speaks of being um, a, given a new mindset. Amen. Revelation 22, verse 5. It reads, then there shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Amen. John writes, there shall be no night there. This is a repeat of the information provided in Revelation chapter 21, verses 23 and 25, which read, The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. There shall be no night there. Amen. In Revelation 21, John lets us know that the glory of Yahweh illuminated the city. That his glory is the light of in the city. Amen. In Genesis chapter 1 verses 3 and 4, it reads, Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light and that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Amen. Here in the holy city, the paradise of Yahweh, on the new earth created by Yahweh, there is no darkness. 
For in Genesis 1 verse 5, God called the light day and the darkness he called night. Amen. And since there's no darkness, there is no night. All right. John writes, they need no lamp nor light of the sun for the Lord God gives them light. Amen. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 5, it reads, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Amen. So, since there's no darkness in the presence of Yahweh, there will be no need for a lamp or the sun or the moon to provide light for the citizens of the city to see by. No darkness, no night. Only the light of the presence of Yahweh and the lamb are needed. And that's a message for us, y'all. As long as we, the citizens of the kingdom, have Holy Spirit, who is the presence of Yahweh with us, we will not walk in the darkness of the world. In John chapter 8, verse 12, reads then jesus spoke to them again saying i am the light of the world he who follows me shall not walk in darkness but have the light of life amen jesus yeshua is the light that leads to eternal life so kingdom citizens remain steadfast in following our king the light for he will lead us to eternal life in the paradise of yahweh which is the tabernacle of yahweh the holy city the new jerusalem the bride of christ the father's house where jesus yeshua has prepared a place for us to be with him glory be to god <coughs> excuse me then john writes and they shall reign forever and ever the amplified says it this way and they shall reign as kings forever and ever through the eternities of the eternities amen this speaks of us as being royalty kings and queens in the kingdom in exodus chapter 19 verse 6 yahweh says to the israelites and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation amen the nation of israel through disobedience did not live in this command they didn't live in it they didn't follow it they just fell by the wayside however all who believe in jesus yeshua revelation chapter 1 verse 5 says him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood has made us kings and priests to his god and father and first peter 2 verse 9 says but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation his own special people amen and a royal priesthood is a kingdom of priests so we kingdom citizens are kings and priests and priest of the Most High and of the Lamb. We have to go out and proclaim the message of the King and His Kingdom as commanded in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, which reads, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So be about doing your priestly duties. Glory be to God. Any questions? Any comments? Amen. Amen. Revelation chapter 22, verses 6 and 7. Then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his service the things which must shortly take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Amen. The angel declares, these words are faithful and true. Amen. The angel is the messenger of Yahweh. He speaks the words of Yahweh. Numbers chapter 1 verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? Amen. Yahweh's word is always true. Yahweh sent his prophets to proclaim his word to the world. He sent his angels as messengers to specific people with particular messages for them. Then he sent us Jesus, Yeshua, Yahweh's living word, who says in John 14, verse 6 and 24, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. Amen. Yeshua, Jesus, has sent angels as messengers to his followers at various times to encourage, direct, 
and deliver them. All right. So the angels are the messengers. Right. And then it says in Revelation 1 verse 11 that he told John, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see right in a book. Amen. The book of Revelation is the book that John was commanded to write. And here, here ends the words of the angel that is guiding John through the revelation from the Lamb, Jesus. Now, <laughs> the angel declares, the angel declares, the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Amen. I said before that the word servant means bond servant, one who was purchased. And that all of those who are kingdom citizens have been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. His blood was the ransom or the purchase price required to set us free from bondage and sin. So we all kingdom citizens who are no longer in bondage to sin are in the service of the king. This message in the book of Revelation is for kingdom citizens, the servants of the Lamb and the Father. It is given so that we will not be surprised by the happenings of our times as they take place. It is to assure us that no matter how crazy it looks, Yahweh is still in control and he still sits on the throne. It is given to remind us to stay steadfast and immovable in our faith. For things will get worse before they get better. However, we have victory in Christ, the Lamb of God. We have victory over our circumstances and situations. For Romans 8 verse 28 reads, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. And we kingdom citizens are of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We each have an assignment to complete, a ministry to carry out as priests of the Most High God and of the Lamb. His word has been spoken over you. And Yahweh says in Isaiah 55 verse 11, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Amen. He has thoughts concerning you. He says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and a hope. Amen. So we need to be about the assignment given to us, glory be to God, by our king. For he says in Mark chapter 13, verses 32 and 33, But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. Amen. And Matthew 24, verse 44, he says, Therefore you also be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Amen. Then he says here in Revelation, Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the word of the prophecy of this book. Amen. So, stay alert, alert kingdom citizens. Be about the work assigned to you. Tell everybody you meet about the king and his kingdom. For Matthew 24 verse 13 and 14 says, He who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Amen. Any comments? Any questions? I wanted to go back to Mark chapter 13 32 and 33 it uh -huh. says even jesus doesn't know he doesn't know he says he only know. the father oh that's 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 something only god himself knows when he's going to reveal that season that time to for uh christ to return exactly the kairos timing of god there you go the kairos timing of god i just Which, noticed that when i read that scripture i said well bless god yeah because that's the kairos timing of god he he puts things in place and they happen when he says they're going to happen and not before. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. It says someplace in, in scripture that God is not slack concerning his word, but he's patient because he's not willing that any should perish. And so kingdom citizens, we got work to do. Amen. We got to spread the gospel. We got to, we got to tell others about the King Jesus and about his kingdom. All right. That there's life in his kingdom. That there's love in his kingdom. That there's healing in his kingdom. 
There's restoration in his kingdom. He can heal that which is broken. Glory be to God. So that you can live and live life more abundantly. Live in peace. Glory be to God. There's peace because there's a lot of people that are struggling with peace. His peace that surpasses all understanding. His peace that is a guard to your heart, mind, and shield, a soul. Glory be to God. Amen. So, yeah, you're right. He doesn't know. It's the Kairos timing of God. Glory be to God. Any other comments? Thank you, Dr. Denise. Any other comments? Any other Christ Any other <laughs> questions? Stop talking so fast. <laughs> glory be to God. <laughs> any others? <laughs> Oh, glory be to God. So now I need somebody to pray us out. <laughs> I need somebody to pray us out. Aditi, I'm going to pick on you. Aditi, unmute yourself so you can pray for us, please. Thank you. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together to learn more about you and, and your grace and your mercy and how you want us to live on this earth. Thank you, dear Lord, for the teacher who brings forth your word and for all that she puts into learning the things that you want us to know. Thank you, dear Lord, for the peace and the understanding that she brings forth. Thank you, Lord God, for all the sisters on this line, for everyone on this line, for their families, and, and, and bless these women and the families they represent. Thank you for the opportunity, dear Lord, once again, to know you, to study you, and to love you. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.